Hello and welcome to the big picture. The controversy over the genetically modified crops, including food crops, through the use of biotechnology has raged in this country for over two decades, if not more. The debate has reached a very crucial stage now with the release of a 492-page report of the Parliamentary Standing Committee of Agriculture, which went into the issue of cultivation of GM food crops. The report, which took nearly two and a half years in the making, has raised many fundamental issues and concerns while suggesting to the government to immediately stop the GM food crop trials all over the country. It has also raised concern over the tests conducted before the go-ahead for BT Brinjal. It also raises concerns over the present regulatory system as well as its lack of transparency. Meanwhile, the protagonists of the GM technology continue to hold that to meet the growing and abnormal demand for food by 2020, the only alternative is to use the genetically modified technology for raising food crops, and they also argue that the fears of its harmful effects both on environment and human life is exaggerated. Meanwhile, the government's response to the report and its suggestions will be keenly watched in the coming days as Parliament resumes on Monday. Meanwhile, we will discuss the implications of the report while asking the question, is G GM technology harmful or helpful? To discuss this, I have with me Dr. M. S. Swaminathan, MP in the Raj Sabha and also the Chairman of the National Farmers uh, Commission and more importantly, known as the father of green revolution in India, on the phone line with me from Chennai. Dr. Suman Sahai, Chairperson of the Gene Campaign, Krishan Beer Chaudhary, President Bharatiya Krishik Samaj, and Bhavdeep Kang, a senior journalist who has been writing extensively on agricultural issues for over a decade now. Welcome to all of you. Uh, let me go to Mr. S Dr. Swaminathan first. Dr. Swaminathan, you have, see you have seen the report of the uh, Standing Committee on Agriculture. It has raised very many fundamental issues about this debate on the genetically modified crops. Sir, what is your initial response to this report? Well, this report was placed uh, on Friday in, in Rajya Sabha, and unfortunately I was busy with some other issues, so I couldn't get a copy of the report and read it, so I not, have not read the report. But I have seen some of the conclusions in the media today, both the electronic media and the print media have covered it, so I have uh, I, I chaired a committee on this question uh, and, and submitted a report in 2004, which explained there was also set up by the Ministry of Agriculture on the agricultural implications of biotechnology. And uh, there are specific questions I could answer, but I can't specifically uh, say what is contained in the report, what is not contained, except what they have read in the media. Yeah. Going by what they were read in the media, it says that, you no. Know, one of the things which it has suggested is that the, the GM crop, food crop trials have to be immediately stopped all over the country. Do you agree with that? Well, I don't fully agree because what is important is not to throw the baby with the bathwater. What is important is to ensure that, the, that there are safeguards and regulatory mechanisms because we are not the only country which is working with GM crops. The work started. I was a contemporary of Watson and Crick, who discovered the double helix structure of DNA in Cambridge in 1952-53, and I watched the growth of the science from that time onwards, from, from almost its birth. Right. Uh, it has got a number of implications, for example, in the medical biotechnology. Nobody questions about the use of genetic modification in the development of new uh, vaccines. Uh, in fact, the very first patent in the world for a living organism was given to Dr. Anand Chakrabarti of India, Indian origin, right. NRI, in the United States, who discovered an organism which can gobble up oil spills, what we call bioremediation. Right. The number of applications of this technology in terms of cleaning up the environment. On the other hand, any powerful technology needs proper regulation. This is where we have been deficient. And my report of 2004, I recommended a Parliament-approved national biotechnology regulatory mechanism, which inspires public confidence, political confidence, professional confidence, and the whole media confidence. Mr. Uh, Dr. Swaminathan, eight, eight years that was given, right? And it is, it is such a regulatory mechanism is nowhere in sight. Still. Dr. Dr. Swaminathan, there is already a bill, a bill is pending in the in in the, in the Parliament, the Biotechnology Regulatory Authority 
of India bill. Anyway, we will come to that a little later. But my question to you right now is, the report also st uh, talks about the kind of tests which which had been carried out before giving uh, uh, permission for br BT Brinjal. You know? Well, the question of the tests to be carried out, they are all part of a regulatory system, which, as I said, we don't yet have. And as you rightly said, the draft legislation has been prepared, right. and it has not yet come to the Parliament as far as I can see, yes. because no committee is going into it at the moment. Unlike the Nuclear Regulatory Authority Bill, which came before the Science and Technology Committee of Parliament, right. and this was approved with some modifications. But this one is yet to be approved. The sooner we have a regulatory mechanism, which, as you said, is transparent, inspires public confidence. One of the criticisms from the media I see is that the present system is not so very transparent. Absolutely. It is, it is susceptible to manipulation. Yes, yes, Dr. 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 Swaminathan, the, uh, yes. we will we will discuss this that, that aspect a little later. Please stay on. I'll come back to you, uh, Dr. Suman Sahai. Uh, from what we hear about from Professor Swaminathan, it is it is the regulatory mechanism which is a problem. Otherwise, GM GM food crops, GM BT cotton, BT brinjal should not be a problem. No, of course it's a problem. It's because your regulatory structures are not sound. We must remember at all times. This your, your argument has also been the same argument as uh, Swaminathan saying that the regulatory mechanisms need to be in good shape. Good because if you good. have a good regulatory system, you will be able to block bad products. Because you don't have a good regulatory system, you allow bad products to go very far. We all have to keep in mind this is a regulated technology. It is a technology that scientists asked for. Right. to be regulated because scientists who work in molecular biology are fully conversant with the fact that this technology can be dangerous. Right. That is why it is regulated. That is why the biosafety aspect of this technology has to be paramount. There are, there are other problems. When you say harmful and, and uh, helpful, the question you also have to ask is relevant. I mean, this mythology about importance for food security, etc., that must be examined. But let's come back to regulation. We don't have a sound regulation. We have a compromised regulation. Gene Campaign went to the Supreme Court in 2004, right. asking for the regulatory system to be improved. We have ad hoc people on our regulatory bodies who have never heard of biosafety, let alone be trained in biosafety. This is a discipline. You have to be trained in it. You have to know how to do it. So we can't just talk in political circles about who said this and should it not, etc. Get your systems right. Scientists have determined that there is a biosafety issue because genetic engineering as a process can lead to poisonous substances when you disturb the cell to the extent that you do. Right. So yeah. you have to first pay attention to that and we have not done so. We have got one of the worst regulatory systems Krishna in the world. Chaudhary, your, your, your uh, uh, opposition to this technology is more fundamental than I suppose then what Suman Sahai says are. We have to see what's happening at global level from right. this GM crops. What is the experience? The GM crop in India, let me let me just see, the, uh, I'm going only by the statistics. The stat GM crops, we're talking of BT cotton. Yeah. The, the, the figures indicate that in 2002, 2003, when the BT cotton was introduced, 191 kilograms per hectare was the yield. And now in 2011-12, it has gone up to 476 hectare kilograms per yield. This is simple, straightforward statistics. How, I mean, now you can go ahead and... In 2004-2005, when the BT cotton area was 5.6%, at that time productivity was 470 kilo per hectare. It, these are data from Cotton Corporation of India. This is the, this and, is the, and the, the I mean, it, this is your, your, your figures in the Directorate of Economics and Statistics, Ministry of Agriculture figures don't match. It's uh, up to them. How they make food the to the farming community. The productivity issue has been reasonably, sorry one for thing, taking one thing this, is very it's very reasonably well established yes. that whatever hike in production took place, took place before BT cotton kicked in. And the reason which has also been established. There is, the, the statistics don't. Uh, a reason that, have, no, before the huge surge of BT cotton happened, the, the rise, in BT, uh, rise in cotton production is prior to that. And the reason for that is that when there was a huge interest in cotton again, the markets opened up. 
a lot more cotton was grown. People who had kept their good hybrids at home. Eel, we are talking of eel, not the area. We are talking about the eel. eel. You, a lot of people who were not cultivating good hybrids because higher. cotton didn't have a market brought their cottons. Okay, anyway, uh, Krishna Mitchell. And now, in 2010-11, uh, yield is 481 kg per hectare. It means hardly 2% yield have increased if we go ahead from 2004-05. Let's, let's leave, let's leave the bigger second, cotton aside. Second point. We're talking of food crops. I, I'm no. talking about second point. Yes. Bacillus stringens gene is not to increase the productivity. It's to control the damage control from ball worm. And the use of pesticides were too much in India at that time. And there is a promise. And yes, pesticide consumption was reduced after introduction of the BT cotton. Right. But now the resistance have developed and pesticide consumption have increased as well as not in India. But if you see the USDA report of the latest report, 14 million hectare area have infested from different weeds, which is resistance to herbicide tolerance. And secondly, the, uh, the 22 new super weeds have developed in US. And lastly, the use of total pesticides have increased as in 1996 and now 2011. Uh, these data have given by the Dr. Ben Brook. He's the scientist of the leading scientist of US. It's an official statement from USDA that increase uh, the pesticide consumption have increased. If we see on no, corn, we will be corn. On corn, it has increased 54%. On cotton, it has increased 2%. Right? Come back to and on soya, it has increased 96%. Okay. Bhavdeep. The, the issue is now about, you know, the let us, going by, going by the report of the Standing Committee, they have raised several uh, important issues. Right. One of it is about Bitty Brinjal. Now, yes, that's right. th this is the first food crop which we are talking yeah. about as far as, uh, Besides, you know. Yeah. So when, when they have raised so many concerns about the Bitty Brinjal, and so many, the other food crops which will, which were supposed to have been, you know, that's right. brought into the same uh, hmm. thing. Now, the, there will be a problem as far as that, right? There is already a problem, as Dr. Sahai said, that the jury is still out on the environmental and health safety aspects of any food crop, Absolutely. which involves the BT gene. After all, what is the BT gene doing? It is producing a toxin, which is supposed to make the food crop resistant to pesticide. What kind of impact on human health will this pesticide have? We still don't know. And there are enough studies abroad which have shown that there are adverse health impact of transgenic foods. And for uh, Dr. Swaminathan mentioned that already this technology is being used in, uh, he's talked about medical biotechnology, but there's a fundamental difference in using this technology to produce, say, cheeses or beer or particular medicines, because in that case, the organism is contained, the transgenes are not being released into the environment. But in this case, when you are growing a food crop Absolutely. and you do not have proper containment, there's a chance that these genes could escape into the environment. Right. Therefore, the importance of monitoring and surveillance. Absolutely. Okay, let me get uh, uh, Dr. Swaminathan in. Dr. Swaminathan, two concerns raised by uh, my panelists here. One is about the, the fact that when, when BT uh, technology was brought in, with the, the argument was that the, the pesticide, the use of pesticides would be reduced. But he says that it was reduced initially, but now it has again gone up tremendously. Second issue is about uh, what, what Baudip was talking about. So, sir, what is your reaction to these two things? Well, I think, you know, first of all, <coughs> pesticide reduction was expected, but the, the polworm is only one of the pests. It's an important pest of cotton. There are many other pests. When you control one, the others get a field day. And therefore, you have to spray for many of the sucking pests and so on. And uh, that's what is happening because the farmer, having brought this, bought the seed at a very high cost, because earlier they were keeping their own varieties. Mostly varieties were grown, and uh, they keep farmers were keeping their own seed. Right. Once you get the hybrid, you have to buy it every year. And unfortunately, there are so many hybrids have come, uh, the same one in our country. Many of them are. Uh, good, bad, and indifferent kind. There is no proper checkup of that quality of the seed which is being sold. I am afraid in all these cases, uh, the Indian Council of Agricultural Research, which is our national agency, it should be our national watchdog. 
that seems to have abdicated its responsibility. So that that's a, we have so many kinds of data. That's a very you know? serious. That's a very serious charge uh, you have made against the ICAR and a person like you making it makes it more uh, serious. And uh, Dr. Swaminathan, the other issue which Baudip Kang raised is about the health issue, the the risk to the health and also the environment from from these uh, you know. Uh, techno from this technology. What is your view on that? The environmental issues are largely related to the loss of uh, biodiversity and also possibly uh, toxins operating on some other non-target organisms. But right. that can be checked up. The biodiversity has to be conserved. This is a major concern also in BT Brinjal. As far as the health aspect is concerned, what I have read so far, it is the animals which graze after the cotton crop has been harvested. We must also say that some of these BT uh, materials grown not only in our country, China, Brazil, of course the United States grows a lot of them. We have international experience, uh, but those countries have uh, very good regulatory mechanisms, and uh, we, we just lack it. Okay. And I would therefore say that while we should be careful about environmental safety, conservation of biodiversity because the loss of every gene limits our options for the future. Absolutely. And at the same time, the health aspects will have to be monitored. Again, goes back to the basic question. These environmental aspects, health aspects, uh, production aspects, all of them, uh, who is uh, going to look at them in an integrated way. Absolutely. So we'll, we need to go into a short break now. Please stay on. We'll, I'll come back to you. Please keep watching. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. We are discussing the Standing Committee of Agriculture's report on the genetically modified food crops and asking the question, if GM technology harmful or helpful? Dr. Suman Sahai, uh, you know, we have, uh, Dr. Swaminathan also has been talking about it, you also spoken about it, the regulatory authority. Where are we stand, where, where do we stand now? What are the, what are the impediments in bringing about a good, safe regulatory mechanism in this country? Conflict of interest is the right. major impediment. No, you, you have to be transparent. But I think I'd like to emphasize one thing, that we have to look very seriously at the process of genetic engineering itself. There is sufficient evidence to show that this process has to be monitored very carefully because of the extreme danger that it can, not always does, yes. but it can pose. And to give you an example how responsible regulators, regulators deal with this technology, the CSIRO in Australia which is uh, like our ICAR, abandoned 10 to 15 years of research because they could not control the production of a toxin in a B P variety that they were developing. They were not able to. The process of genetic engineering itself was generating that toxin and the scientists abandoned that. That is because they had a transparent and honest regulatory system that did not come under pressure from vested interests. So you have to take on board the fact that there is sufficient evidence that animals have died, have suffered from abortion, uh, have shown extreme degeneration of tissues, etc. This is not myth. This is fact. And when responsible uh, agencies can take action and say, abandon this um, process, abandon the technology, what is preventing us? The most important question to ask is that is this technology, and that is why I raised the question of relevant, is this technology really something that we should be investing so much money on, given the very high risk that it poses, given the huge expense that regulation means? I mean, the more you add on to the regulatory system, and you have to add on to it, it raises the cost of the seed. You've just seen Maharashtra ban BT cotton, uh, ban Mahiko BT cotton. In fact, the, the Standing Committee's report is, makes a very interesting observation that even if the farmers want to buy the, the normal seeds, they're not able, they're, it's not available. So there's a huge bungle going on in the trade. But let's keep the trade aside. The question is that, is this a technology that we really can afford, given the fact that it is very high risk, that we don't have appropriate biosafety testing systems in this country and we're not willing to learn? 
And third, there is a cost factor. When BT cotton came into the market, it was roughly five times the cost of the best cotton hybrids that other companies were selling. Because if you do biosafety testing, it will add to the cost. Absolutely. So the question we okay. ask is, should uh, we not no, move we are, on? I, let, I want uh, Krishan Bhir Chaudhary, I want you to look at, uh, tell us from the farmer's point of view. How many farmers in this country have now come to realize that this technology is good or bad for them? Because cotton was a non-food crop. Right. And we have the very sad experience. Can the authorities ready to visit the farmer's problems? The five buffaloes, my nearest field, they bought balance. There were 20 animals, cows and buffaloes. 15 are passing blood in their urine. It's not a it's not a easy point. It's a very dangerous. No, no. And because, but, but, but illegally. Are, are, illegally. You, are you suggesting that this no, is directly related to the... Illegal, illegally, meal cake was produced from BT cotton seed. It was illegally produced. But uh, who, who can check it? Nobody can. Because that's a non-food. And now we are talking about the BT brinjal. I ask, where is the shortage of brinjal in this country? I ask, who is asking that uh, we need the uh, brinjal BT? We are not asking. We have sufficient production. Farmers is not getting. Where is the shortage of brinjal in this country? There is no shortage of any brinjal. Then why you are giving? This is a game. There is a nexus between the corporates and the policy decision makers. To capture the seed security of this country, seed is the basic need of food. One example is sufficient to open the eyes of the authorities. How they have not supplied the BT cotton seed into Vidarbha? Because they have captured the market. There is no... The traditional seed available for farmers. Absolutely. If it will well, happen, that is what the standing if, if, if the same will happen in food crop sector, in oil seed sector, in pulses sector, then how the more 123 crores population who will feed from the world? We should not surrender. So your main aim is to capture the seed security, throw in the name of technology only. There is no cost-wise. If you see the cost of production have increased more than six times. Okay. Right. Uh, Dr. Swaminathan, you yes. heard you heard the both uh, Krishna Bhir Chaudhary and Suman Sahai. I mean, they are raising the fundamental issue. Why do we need this technology at all? Do you think this technology is... I mean, what is your view on this? They, they say that this technology is not necessary at all. It's a question of all te <coughs> technology choice is our is you know is our concern. In fact, there has to be a mechanism that also in the report 2004 report had suggested uh, before we invest BT or whatever it is. The very first question is: Is it necessary? Is this the only way? Because there are other methods of achieving the same thing, like what we call marker-assisted selection. This is also coming from molecular biology. Molecular markers can be done. It does not involve recombinant DNA technology. So the choice of the problem, and we must in our country, with 80 percent of farmers, small farmers, work, concentrate on what they call public good biotechnology, not merely commercial profit biotechnology. That is where I think we have become very weak in the sense of a publicly funded institution, with the Cotton Institute in Nagpur is doing a very good job. But I think we need we should, we should have had concentrated on varieties. Even BT Brinjal was hybrid, so that every year the farmer has to buy the seeds and so on. So it involves a policy in terms of choice of research. But I think technology itself, the technology will, whether we like it or not, uh, genetic technology will progress more and more findings will Do, be made. Dr. Swaminathan, the, the, the basic fundamental question, is this... It, the only way to meet the food security needs of this country, say by 2020, we are told that there will be abnormal demand for food. So is it, is genetically modified food the only way to reach this kind of demand? There is no one pathway, you know, because science is multifaceted. You have to choose, don't worship a tool because it is a new or so old. What is important is to choose the tool which will take your, take you to a desired goal speedily, surely and economically. I, that is why, that is, the, that is the real task of the research strategy managers, research strategy choice managers. This is why I said earlier, we are very weak not only in regulatory mechanism, but also in determining where to apply technology and where not. Okay. Uh, 
Bhavdeep, uh, the question is now, you have been reporting on these issues. How do you, and Dr. Suman Sai was talking of conflict of interest and vested interests and things like that. Do you see the government after this report of the standing committee changing its stand in any way and, you know, understanding and reacting and positively to the, to the suggestions made by the standing committee? Well, certainly the government is going to have to take note of the standing committee report because it's raised some very important issues. And, and, and it's a unanimous whatever, report. It's a unanimous report. And whatever the position of the central government might be, the fact is that the state governments have to be on board. Agriculture is, after all, a state Absolutely. subject. And we've had chief ministers writing to the central gov government objecting to GM crop trials in their states without the permission of the state government. We've had instances of farmers uprooting and burning transgenic crops, which were growing alongside their fields. So obviously, these things will have to be taken into account. Uh, the monitoring and surveillance mechanisms will have to be strengthened. And I don't see uh, any BT food crop being approved uh, in a hurry. Dr. Sai, last words to you. Yes, My last you know, word on this is that this technology is over. There is so much conflict. There is Dr. so Swamanathan much scientific... Doesn't, doesn't think that it's over. It's something which is evolving still. And I think the days of uh, molecular biology, of recombinant DNA technology are, in my view, uh, I beg to differ, I think are over the world across. There is such a plethora of problems that you'd have to be a nut job to say, no, let's plow on with this when you have options. You have marker rated selection coming up now as a very viable challenge. You've got apple mixes coming up as a very viable challenge. And at the end of the day, let's not forget whatever has happened in food security so far in any part of the world this and any other part of the world has come from conventional breeding Absolutely. nothing has come from genetic engineering okay i mean I, I, you know on that note we'll have to end this program it's very interesting what the uh, today's discussion it is uh, the government will have to take a view on this but as some of my panelists have pointed out there are huge interests involved. We call them vested or real. You, there are interests involved and this is something which we'll need to keep a, keep a close watch on how the government will react to this kind of suggestions which has come up from the standing committee. Anyway, thanks to all my guests, Dr. Swaminathan, Dr. Suman Sahai, Krishnbir Chaudhary and Baudeep Kang. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture same time on Monday.